Hey everybody, good morning. This is Miss Laura from Bartlesville Public Library for our weekly story time, our online virtual story time on Facebook Live. I'm really excited today because we are in the middle of our first week of summer reading program. So if you haven't yet, um, you can sign up for our virtual reading program by downloading the Beanstack Tracker app. Um, you can find the information on how to do that on our Facebook page and our website. We also have our first kickoff event, or we have our first event, our kickoff event this Friday. All of our events have been moved outdoors. This Friday night from 6 to 8 p.m., we're going to have a big kickoff party at the new Tower Center at Unity Square with a special performance by Inspiral Circus Entertainment. They were here last year, very popular. We're going to have games set up. Um, from the library's new collection of outdoor games that are available for checkout. We're going to have $1 train rides from David Valdez, and we're going to have uh, DJ Southern Snow set up selling snow cones. So it's going to be a really good time this Friday at 6 o'clock at the New Tower Center at Unity Square. Now our summer reading program theme is Imagine Your Story. So I got books today about imaginary creatures. I've got a book about a unicorn, I've got a book about a dragon, a book about a zombie, and what else? Oh, A Mermaid, one of my favorite new books we recently got. I'm going to start with this book about a unicorn called Unicorn Wings. Isn't that a pretty picture? Written by Mallory Lower and illustrated by Pamela Sillen Palmer. Unicorn Wings. This is one of our early reader books. Once there was a unicorn. He was white like the moon and his horn was magic. It could make rainbows. It could make muddy water clear. What else could it do? It could fix cuts and broken bones. But the unicorn did not care about his magic horn. He wished that he had wings. The unicorn went to a castle. The castle had a garden that was filled with flowers and butterflies. I wish I had wings like yours, the unicorn said to a butterfly. My wings are too tiny for you, said the butterfly. The unicorn went to the woods. He looked up into the trees where birds flew and landed in the tree branches. I wish I had wings like yours, the unicorn said to a bluebird. My wings are the wrong color for you, said the bluebird. The unicorn went to a pond. Frogs jumped. Dragonflies buzzed. Snowy white swans swam in the water. I wish I had wings like yours, the unicorn said to a swan, but the swan just shook her head. The unicorn walked on. He came to the sea and he lay down and fell asleep. Something touched the unicorn's nose. He opened his eyes, and there was a white horse with white wings. But one of the horse's wings drooped. It was hurt. The unicorn stood up. He put his magic horn to the horse's wing. The wing grew strong, and it did not droop anymore. The unicorn healed it with his horn. The white horse spread her wings and flew toward the rising sun.
I wish, I wish I had wings like that, said the unicorn. He looked down sadly. And what did he see? He saw himself in the water and he had big white wings. The unicorn stretched his wings out wide. Then he flew after the white winged horse. The unicorn wanted to say thank you. That's the end, it's a short little unicorn story. And I think next we'll read about the dragon. Who would like to have a dragon for a pet? You think that would be fun? This is called Me and My Dragon by David, I'm not sure how to say this last name, David Berzicki. Me and My Dragon. What would you do with a dragon as a pet? Would you take it for walks? Give it a bath? Hmm. Some kids want a dog. Others would like a cat. I want a dragon. But not a big dragon. A big dragon wouldn't fit in my house. I wouldn't want a three-headed dragon either. It might not get along with itself. I would choose a fire-breathing dragon. Before I brought him home, I'd take him for a checkup. I'd hold his hand and tell him he was a brave little dragon, and I'd make sure the doctor gave him a couple of lollipops. On the way home, he could sit with me, if mom and dad didn't mind. I'd give him a name, Sparky, a place to stay, and some toys to play with. When I thought he was ready, I would teach him to fly. Woo, I'd get him a collar and a leash and then I'd take him for a walk every day. If he was a naughty dragon, I might have to send him to obedience school. After he learned to behave, I could take him camping in the summer and trick-or-treating in the fall. We could clear the neighbor's driveways in the winter. But I might not take him kite flying in the spring. If I missed the bus, he would help me get to school just in time for show and tell. Bullies? Ha! Huh. If you have a dragon, you don't need to worry about bullies. You don't need to worry about Brussels sprouts either. Dragons love them. But don't give them broccoli, it gives them gas. And you don't want a fire-breathing dragon with gas. Every night I'd give my dragon a bath. Bath time would be fun, sometimes. I would pick out books that wouldn't give him nightmares and read to him until he got sleepy. I'd tuck him in and say good night, and then we'd fall asleep, just me and my dragon.
that's the end. Sounds like it might be kind of fun to have a dragon for a pet. Do you want to sing a song? Let's sing the wheels on the bus. That's one of our favorites at the library. Here we go, ready? <clears throat> The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all through the town. The lights on the bus go blink, 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 blink. Blink, 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 the lights on the bus go blink, 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 all through the town. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 all through the town. The doors on the bus go open and shut, open and shut. Open and shut, the doors on the bus go open and shut all through the town. The people on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. The people on the bus go up and down all through the town. The babies on the bus go wham, 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 wham. Wah, wah, wah. The babies on the bus go wah, 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 all through the town. The mamas on the bus say shh, 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 shh. The mamas on the bus go shh, 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 all through the town. The daddies on the bus say I love you, I love you, I love you. The daddies on the bus say, I love you, all through the town. All right. So let's read about the zombie next, but don't be scared. It's not a scary zombie in this story. This is a little girl named Zombelina. She loves to dance. Written by Kristen Crow and illustrated by Molly Idol. This is Zombelina. <clears throat> there she is. My name's Zombelina, and I love to dance. I sway and sashay in a weird zombie trance. I moonwalk with mummies and boogie. I wiggle with werewolves and rock out with rats. I spin like a specter and glide like a ghost. But I love to dance for my family the most. We live on the corner of Twisted Tree Lane in a creaky old house with a bat weather vane. My mom can be nitpicky. Dad blows his fuse. My brother does not close his mouth when he chews. And me, I amaze them with zombie ballet, though sometimes I get quite a bit carried away. We all hang together in good times and bad. I'm glad they're my brother, my mom, and my dad. One morning, my mother said, Dear Zombelina, it's time you turned into a real ballerina. I thought she'd do magic. I thought I'd hear poof, but no, we took off from the top of our roof. We shopped for, for ballet slippers, tutus, and tights. I started a dance class on Saturday nights. Madame Maladroit said, she looks a bit green, but my, what extension, that's the best I've seen. My class didn't like me. They cringed at the bar. They said I was taking my talents too far. See how she stretched her leg so far? She just took it right off. 
But soon I was learning techniques of ballet and I practiced at home in my attic each day. Now forgive me if I don't pronounce these ballet terms correctly. My demi-plies made the spider webs tatter. My wicked chassés made the skeletons chatter. The attic floors creaked and the mockingbirds shrieked as my grand pirouette caused the mirrors to shatter. I practiced my arabesque night after night. The werewolves and poltergeists howled with delight. <clears throat> and then the day came. My recital was here. The red curtains parted. I shivered with fear. The music began and I pointed my toes. The crowd was so quiet, they stared and I froze. I started to twitch. I went into a trance. My class began twirling, but I couldn't dance. Not when nothing was growling or clanking or clunking or rattling or howling. I quivered and shivered right down to my bones. I held out my arms and I made a few moans. A zombie, the crowd cried with horrified screams. This wasn't the ballet debut of my dreams. They all fled the theater. My classmates left too. I stood there alone, wondering what I should do. Until I could hear a familiar yoo-hoo and there was my family. They finally appeared, and they shrieked, and they howled, and they snarled, and they cheered. The seat in the theater filled up, or the seats in the theater filled up once again, a packed house of spookies, so I breathed and began. Look at her dance. Hooray, called my brother. Encore, cried my dad. You're the best ballerina this world's ever had. My mom said, bewitching, so lively and airy. We're getting the chills. You're so good, it's scary. Madame Maladroit cried, bravo, magnifique, my very best student, dreadfully unique. They threw me black roses and clapped for me. Wow, and I was so proud that I took a big bow. We flew home together to Twisted Tree Lane to our creaky old house with a bat weather vane. My family surprised me with monster balloons. We ate spider sundaes with skeleton spoons. They said my performance was haunting tonight. My family makes everything turn out all right. You sure came alive on the stage, my mom said. But I was dead tired. <sighs> so I danced off to bed. The end. We have a couple of other stories here at the library about Zombelina. If you ever want to come check them out. So we've read about a unicorn, a dragon, and a zombie. What else did I say? Mermaid. This is a brand new book. It's so beautiful. The first time I read it, I got a little lump in my throat at the end. Mermaid and Me by Sush. That's the name of the author, Sush. Mermaid and Me. <clears throat> this is me, the girl wearing a mermaid tail in an old class photo. I really loved mermaids. I was not a popular girl. My classmates didn't believe in mermaids. They would laugh, call me names, and never ask me to play games. Sometimes when I felt lonely, I would imagine I saw a mermaid in the water. She seemed so real, but it was only the sunlight playing on the waves. One day, I was looking at the sea when I saw the top of a head, blue eyes, and a button nose emerge from the water. 
Then our eyes met. You are a mermaid, I exclaimed in delight. The mermaid shook her head. No, I'm a girl, an underwater girl. She paused. But you know I like how mermaid sounds. You can call me mermaid. And who are you? I'm a girl too, I said, an above ground girl. We became friends and would spend our time together learning about each other and having many adventures. Mermaid invited me to follow her to the bottom of the sea to look for beautiful shells. I shook my head and said, I wish I could, but I can't swim. She smiled, splashed with her palms and said, but you will, we will. And when we swam together, she held me gently and promised to never let go. Once Mermaid and I found a turtle caught in a piece of plastic and helped set it free. When our work was done, we watched the turtle disappear into the waves. Mermaid was learning so much about my way of life, like how it felt to ride a bicycle with the wind blowing through my hair. I have never ridden a bicycle. I don't think I ever will, said Mermaid as she looked at her tail. I jumped up and clapped my hands, but you will, we will. I told my friend that one of my favorite things to do was have a tea party. Mermaid sighed and said, I wish I could go. I have never been to a tea party. I smiled, but you will, we will. That day we had one of the best tea parties in between our two worlds. Sometimes we spotted a fisherman when he wasn't looking, we would dive in and place an old shoe on his hook. The fisherman scratched his head as he fished out one boot after another. We would hide behind a rock and giggle. And on hot summer days, we would sit quietly, dreaming our own dreams together. One night, there was a big storm it had brought all kinds of garbage to the surface. I couldn't wait till the morning to see if my friend was safe. I looked and called out for mermaid everywhere. Finally, I spotted her. I tried to untangle mermaid, but the net was too strong. I needed help and saw a few of my classmates on the beach. I know you don't believe me, and you think mermaids are fairy tales, but please believe me that this once, I cried. There is a mermaid caught in a net, and she needs our help. My classmates were silent for a moment. Then they turned to me and said, show us the way. Together, we managed to set mermaid free. Thank you, my friends, for saving me, said Mermaid, but I must leave. It is not safe here for me. Will I ever see you again? I asked, wiping my tears. Yes, you will. We will see each other again. And from that day on, my classmates and I picked up any garbage we found on the shore so that Mermaid could return someday. I grew up and had a family, and all that time I hoped to see Mermaid again until one day I did. The end. All right, that's the end of story time today. If you missed the first part, I wanna remind everyone that we are in our first week of summer reading program and our big kickoff event is this Friday at 6 p.m. outdoors at the Tower Center at Unity Square. We're gonna have Inspiral Circus Entertainment. We're gonna have a dollar train rides. We're gonna have games set up. We're gonna have snow cones available for purchase from DJ Southern Snow. It's gonna be a grand time, so I hope to see you then. Thank you.